Hi and welcome back to Toulon Naval Base. The head of the French Navy, Admiral Pierre Vendier, today is hosting his American and British counterparts, CNO McGilday of the US Navy and First Sea Lord Tony Radakin of the Royal Navy. I had the rare chance to ask all three of them about cooperation and interoperability between those three major navies. We are three of us uh, there. To, uh, we, we do that once a year to share uh, our common views on how organizing our forces, exchanging experience, and try to coordinate our actions in preparing and using our forces worldwide. Uh, we three navies share uh, the two main bottom lines, which are carriers with a naval aviation and uh, continuous at sea deterrence and nuclear submarines, which are the very core structure of our navies and which give them uh, their political um, uh, effect uh, in, the, in, the, in our countries. And so this cooperation is very important. Uh, we encounter ourselves uh, all over the world. Uh, and today is a, is a great day because uh, the first two of uh, Queen Elizabeth Kaya Group um, is uh, the occasion for the Charles Gold, which comes back from uh, his uh, mission of this year, uh, to uh, encounter themselves. And we will, all of us, uh, go uh, on the two carriers to have a visit and give this signal that we are working together. So for me, it's a, it's a delight to be here. Um, as uh, Admiral Pierre said, um, we are three NATO navies, we're three nuclear navies, and we're three aircraft carrier navies. And the fact that we can operate together, the fact that we have the same shared interests and values is part of our strength. And that's a level of cooperation, and we say this, this word interoperability, that exists all around the globe uh, and its heart is in NATO and Europe but we operate together in the Mediterranean, the Caribbean, in the Indian Ocean and increasingly in the Indo-Pacific Ocean and the UK's first carrier deployment with HMS Queen Elizabeth is a symbol of that cooperation. This is NATO's aircraft carrier as much as it is the UK's aircraft carrier but it's also about us reflecting our integrated review and staying strong in Europe, but stretching out to the Indo-Pacific. And the opportunity to work alongside these two great navies is, 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 a, is an enormous strength and a great delight. First of all, it's a privilege to be here today in Toulon with both uh, Admiral Vandier and Admiral Radican. And uh, I would say to echo on, their, on their, uh, their gracious comments, that we do represent three maritime nations. We are three shipmates, we are three allies, and we are three close friends. And I think that symbolically, we represent over 70 years of un an unprecedented era of uh, peace among great powers. And uh, through our sailing across the globe, our interoperability uh, and interchangeability, as Admiral, Admiral Radican mentioned, we're able to support mutual security interests and achieve mutual security interests, and at the same time, I think uh, have uh, helped deliver economic prosperity to billions through uh, safe uh, and secure trade routes. So again, it's a privilege to be here today. I think we, we, we represent shared values, uh, shared interests, and of course three uh, global navies that operate together with other like-minded navies uh, to ensure that uh, the seas remain open and free and prosperous for all. Integrated Review makes clear that we continue to be a strong partner within NATO. So we are anchored within the Euro-Atlantic, but we also recognize that we need to stretch out further. And what we want to do is the extraordinary cooperation that exists between all three of our navies and, and with the other NATO navies to extend that at the same time. So the conversations that we've been having are to share our plans, to share, um, to confirm the alignment that exists, which is about promoting free and open seaways, to support our countries, to recognize the shared values and interests, and to support both security and stability and prosperity. And so the more that we can coordinate our activity, and that ranges from sharing information, 
to uh, sharing our plans to then coordinating some of our deployments, the better it is for all of us as well as for the other nations that are friends and allies. And I think that's going on in all kinds of spheres um, in terms of everything that we do. And at the moment of Scotland, all three of our navies are being involved in an exercise called Formidable Shield about how we counter some of the most dangerous threats out there with uh, ballistic missiles uh, and supersonic missiles and we're working together to combat those threats and we will work together to support our interests and values all around the globe. So to answer your question directly, you, you, you asked me uh, the United States um, uh, perception of increased European activity in the in the Indo-Pacific, I would say A, we welcome it, and, and B, it's just natural. If you take a look at where we have been operating and are operating today, from the Arctic Basin to the high north, the Caribbean, the Indian Ocean, right, the, uh, the Arabian Gulf, the Mediterranean Sea, the Atlantic, this is just a natural progression. And if I would give you just a few of examples of interchangeability, just a month ago, uh, a U.S. carrier uh, uh, task group, the Eisenhower Carrier Task Group, fell uh, beneath the Charles de Gaulle uh, Task Group as Task Force 50 in the Middle East. Uh, likewise, uh, we, are, we have a U.S. ship that is operating as part of CSG-21, the USS uh, the, the, the Sullivans. Um, uh, our ships uh, operate together all the time, um, sometimes in some very precarious situations. Our command and control is seamless. and so. Moving to the Indo-Pacific, I think, is just a natural, uh, a natural move uh, for all three of us. And I think, I think it goes hand in glove with the work that we've been doing, as I mentioned earlier, over the past 70 years to help underpin an international order that's benefited so many. The, the, the commitment of, of France in the uh, Pacific is not new because we have half of our maritime domain over there. And uh, in the past decades, it was committed to, uh, about sovereignty issues. So it was illegal fishing, drug uh, enforcement, and so far. Uh, as far as the, the, the militarization of the area is running at a very fast path, in fact, we are now committed to join our efforts to have a, a better framework for intelligence sharing and making some exercises that uh, let the, the, our counterparts in the area uh, be sure that we, 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 will, we will be there and uh, we are working together to enforce this security and this freedom of navigation. And so the level of cooperation we have to demonstrate is uh, higher and higher each day due to the militarization of the area. Could I ask you a question about uh, aircraft carriers and the way in which you think that they will play a role in, in the future, how important that is, and particularly in light of uh, you know, the capacity of anti-ship missiles now, Ch Russia, China. How, how, what's your sort of vision of how key air aircraft carriers are to uh, the, the way in which you, you know, plan for naval warfare? I think if you look at a map of the Pacific, uh, the, the U.S. have invented the carrier warfare during the World War II because of the size of the Pacific. And so moving a bunch of 30, 50, 80 aircraft from thousands of kilometers with, with uh, ammunition, with radars, cell defense, uh, in, uh, 1,000 kilometers per day, it's something which is huge in balancing the uh, militarization of, of the area. And so you do not need so much uh, shore support to do that, and you can move uh, the position of the, of the forces whenever di directed. You can raise the level or uh, reduce the level of your presence. It's very smooth, very easy, and so in a state-to-state -state confrontation, it's a, a very uh, sensible tool which lets the politics do what they want, and uh, it's, I think, my point, much more easy to do it with carriers. I think mobility is a key point. So uh, if I would draw a parallel, uh, the airport here in Toulon that you flew into uh, today or yesterday will be in the same exact place tomorrow. These two aircraft carriers could be outside of the Strait of Gibraltar, they could be in the Suez Canal or further south. So mobility is incredibly important, and as Admiral Vandier talked about, that's an advantage in a vast area like the Pacific. Uh, I'd also uh, uh, like to mention the defense and depth capabilities that we have to defend ourselves against, uh, against uh, incoming missiles is also uh, significant. And the last thing I would say in terms of versatility in the future, if I think about the U.S. Navy's first aircraft carrier, the Enterprise, in her time of service, which was about 50 years, 
59 different, 59 different types of aircraft flew off the decks of that carrier. In a day and age when we're now looking at fifth, fifth gen, air, fourth gen aircraft, fifth gen aircraft, unmanned uh, uh, aircraft, uh, there's significant possibilities there. We believe in, we believe in the carrier force that we have is a significant advantage for our countries. We're, we're very fortunate that we, uh, we all have capabilities that are the best defended against some of these uh, super missiles and ballistic missiles. The first is we're all nuclear submarine navies and so we have a phenomenal capability that is, uh, is there underwater. The second is that we have these floating airfields which are the best defended airfields in the world because they move and they have space-based assets, they've got cyber assets, they've got layers of defense, they've got submarines all protecting them. And this is a phenomenal capability and it's one that we can use to demonstrate our values and interests and it's one that we can also use in a worst case scenario for sheer hard power. And the, uh, the, the, the philosophy of keeping your aircraft carriers as safe as possible, but being able to project that power and the lethality through the aircraft and in the future the drones that fly from them remains as, as consistent as it has been throughout the whole aircraft carrier story. And the, the absolute proof in all of that is that if you look at all the major navies in the world, they are all investing in aircraft carriers. Admirals, uh, would you say that uh, interoperability is more important than ever to face uh, emerging, emerging threats globally? And uh, operationally, how does it translate? Uh, you mentioned Formidable Shield and uh, Task Force 50, but do you have other examples as well? Well, we just did steadfast. We just did an exercise off the coast of Portugal, a very high-end NATO exercise that included integrated air and missile defense and, and a very advanced anti-submarine warfare exercises. And so we couldn't do those singularly. We do them, we do them together in a way that we are leveraging uh, in a complementary fashion each other's capabilities. Uh, and also, uh, if there are any vulnerabilities, we also keep that in mind as we operate together. The, the range of interoperability is very wide. We need to align our concepts, our training, our uh, pl deployment pl plannings, and our capabilities. And so it's uh, what we do uh, today with uh, the British Cairo Group. It's uh, just to, uh, to be able to check at all these levels that we are quickly able to join ourselves. And here in France, also from France, but tomorrow in the Pacific or in the Indian Ocean. Yes, and I... Um I would say we have interoperability uh, and we also go uh, frequently a step further with interchangeability. So that we, the level of cooperation and coordination that exists between our three navies means that uh, we can do so much more. So whether that's that exercise uh, formidable shield against some of the, 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 the most serious threats we face. We work in the Caribbean together to support our overseas territories and to also counter illicit drugs. We work together in NATO the whole time, supporting our submarines so that they have freedom of manoeuvre to operate in the North Atlantic. And then you're seeing that in the Mediterranean today, and then you see it further afield in the Indo-Pacific, and you see it all the time in, in, in the Arabian Gulf. So this is, um, we are extraordinary, they're the extraordinary beneficiaries of three navies that can operate together and have similar high-end capabilities and we have a political frame of shared values and interests, and that is part of our strength. Comment on, to punctuate what Admiral Radigan just said, uh, our interoperability is all grounded on trust. That is the secret sauce. It really, really makes us a uh, formidable force together.